My belt goes around my hips. This belt goes everywhere this pack goes. Um, my pistol, I've got a, this happens to be a 40 Smith & Wesson. It's an FNX. I like it because I'm really a 1911 guy and I can carry this cocked and locked like I carry my 1911s. It can function the same way. So I like that. Um, also on this belt, in addition to my pistol, there's one spare full, full magazine for my pistol. In this little pouch here, my little diamond sharpening stone goes. I don't know if you guys can see that, hopefully. And also, I have a fire steel that stays right on my waist um, with my pistol. Then also here, get this stuff shoved away. Also here goes my primary blade, which happens to be an SE4 right now. Seems to be a great knife. I'm really enjoying using it. Fits my hand good. It seems to take a beating. So, um, but I'm not married in particular to any specific knife. So if I do another video in a month, you might see a different one in here. But that's what I'm using for now. Also on my belt, I've got a bundle of paracord stuffed into here. And then one thing about my system is, so I have this belt that I wear around my waist, obviously. And then this pouch on my pack is detachable. This is a moly pouch on here. So if I set up my shelter site or my campsite and I want to um, leave from there and go out on some specific mission, I detach this from my main pack and attach it to this. I've even at times made like some suspenders. If I've got a lot of weight in here, I'll make some suspenders out of paracord. Um, so that's that part of my system. So I'll just start whipping through this. So my outer pouch here has my folding knife. Um, this happens to be my Benchmade. I have two of these. One's in my pocket right now. Um, but I really like these little knives. They strike a fire steel really well, hold an edge well. This ATS-34 stainless steel seems to be decent steel, not too brittle. So um, that, I told you I wasn't going to go into a lot of detail, so I'm going to stop. Leather gloves. My multi-tool, this one Leatherman Rebar, my compass, it's a Brunton compass, but um, this compass without going into too much detail, this is allows me to do a back azimuth and I navigate. One thing I will say is I hear a lot of people say on the boards that a compass is useless without a map. And I just want to say that that's absolutely not true in the country where I live. <clears throat> Here, the country is really open. So a really good way to navigate is from one prominent geographic feature to another. And <clears throat> so if I want to navigate away from my camp, um, I'll take a back azimuth on my direction and use this in conjunction with kind of a ranger bead type system. I'll hang a piece of paracord around my neck and I'll tie knots for about for to keep a pace count and keep track of my distance. So um, I do not always have maps of the areas that I go. For one thing, that country is so fucking big that it's, I, I would have a stack of maps an inch thick to cover all that area. So, and another thing I think a lot of guys don't understand about the desert country and, and this area where I live is, is south and east from here, where I'm at is about in the center of the state of Oregon. And south and east from here is a huge section of country where there's very little population base, very little roads, um, open country. So, I mean, it is just massive country out there. So anyway, I digress. So going on, little bandana. I actually have two of these in my pack. They come in really handy. Obviously some cord. You gotta have a lot of cord, or at least I do. Um, I carry about 110 feet or so little roll of duct tape. Not really sure why I'm still packing this around. I haven't actually ever used it for anything in the field yet, but I'm convinced at some point it'll come in handy. My headlamp, this is a Petzl headlamp. And what I do like about this headlamp is it has a red lens on it. Um, and that red lens allows me to, I move a lot at night in the desert, and that red lens allows me to look at my compass um, or a map if I happen to be using one without totally ruining my night vision, which is good. So I think that's everything in there. Um, obviously my axe, um, my
my security blanket. I'm working on um, getting some counseling and maybe drifting away from this codependent relationship I have with my ex. <clears throat> um, going into the side pockets, I've got my main water bottles. This is a 32 ounce Nalgene. Um, this is my clean water bottle, so this never gets dirty water in it. The only water that goes in here either comes from my house, from a bottle, or after it's been boiled. Also in my side pouches, um, I carry 50 rounds of pistol ammunition, two full magazines, and then the balance of that 50 rounds is divided between two Ziploc bags that sit in the bottom of each of my water bottle pouches. And then a little more paracord in the bottom of that water bottle pouch. On this side, my water bottle pouch, I've got a 40 ounce stainless steel canteen. And that sits in a canteen cup. Really like this system. Gives me a nice mug, but also one more thing to boil water in. Uh, I think that takes care. Oh, there is a few little more gems here. One thing I carry that not everybody does is I carry about 15 feet of rigid wire. Um, and this comes in handy for all kinds of stuff. Making little hooks, hanging things. It has enough rigidity that I can even skewer like a small ground squirrel or something and, and um, skewer it over the fire. Spit roasted, I guess you call that. Going into my outer compartment here, I have my fire kit. Inside my fire kit, don't laugh at me. I have a backup fire steel. I have a box of stormproof matches. <laughs> Again, I've never used them. I don't know why. Um, and then I have a handful of little commercially made tinders in here. Um, they're just so compact. I've carried like dryer lint and tinder that, um, <clears throat> that I've come up with and things like that. But this is just for safety. I rarely ever use this tinder. It, it's just for that one night that it's super stormy. So that's actually a pretty good supply of tinder there and will last me a long time. At least I hope so. Also in this outer pouch, my spare batteries. So I have three sets of batteries for my headlamp and two sets of batteries for my main light, which I haven't gotten to yet. So my big light source is, and it's not super powerful. I think this is like an 80 lumen or maybe even 100, 100 lumen. It's a Surefire aviator. It's fairly light, made out of aluminum. But again, what I like about this light is it has a red lens on it. I don't know if you can see that. I can also use white light, use it for white light, and it's extremely bright. But again, that red lens, when you're moving a lot at night, it's nice to have a little light source that doesn't totally ruin your eyes after they've adjusted to the darkness. So let's see what we got here. Moving on to my next pouch, this is where all my clothing goes. So, beanie, pair of um, USGI Polypro slash wool glove liners. I'm not sure if they're a blend of the two or what. I think they have, I think they're like wool and Polypro, but anyway, they're really warm considering how small they are. And I can put these on inside my leather gloves to give me a warm set of gloves for my hands, or also sometimes I wear them when I'm sleeping when it's really cold, I'll just wear these liners. The beanie, gotta have the beanie. Um, my scarf, this is a wool, kind of a scarf thing, and again, I'll wrap this thing around my head at night. Um, covers my head and my neck, I can take a couple of wraps. Then, I have a set of Gore-Tex gear in here. This is a Gore-Tex storm shell and a set of Gore-Tex pants. Another bandana, my second of two that are in my system. I wear glasses, so I carry a spare set. Um, I'm blind as a fucking bat. If my glasses break, I'm screwed if I don't have an extra. And then I have two pairs of socks and an extra change of underwear. Going down into the big main compartment, main compartment um, near the top I have my USGI poncho. Great 
great piece of kit. This is my food source right here. It's um, about 6,000 calories in here right now. I'll, um, I'll break this down a little bit later, but this is one of the pieces of my kit that I'm actually working on right now. Um, I've been trying all kinds of different food sources to pack. My idea is to have five to seven days food supply in my pack at any given time. So the most important thing is um, in here is my Starbucks V. I love this stuff. Now, I only carry seven packets of it, um, and my thought is that maybe I can detox myself off of caffeine in my first couple of days. Little first aid kit. Um, this is not an off-the-shelf kit. It, it's in a bag that's off the shelf, but I've actually stripped the contents and repacked it with stuff that I feel like is important to me. Then my cooking kit. Basically consists of a titanium pot, um, the lighter in here, uh, I even have actually a, a paper towel in here right now, I'm not sure how I ended up with that in there, but it is, so, um, and then I have some hand sanitizer in there as well. Good little, um, this piece of kit I've had for a long time, I cook right over the open flames with it. Also inside my little cooking kit bag. I carry a towel, and this is actually half of a towel. This was a full-size towel that I cut in half, but it makes a good size for a camp towel or a little kitchen cook towel. And then I have a titanium fork and spoon, and I don't have a fork and a spoon because I want to sit down and eat all proper with a fork and a spoon. I have a fork and a spoon because I consider a utensil a pretty essential piece of kit and so they just serve as backup to one another um, if one of them breaks or I lose one or whatever I have a second one digging a little deeper in here this is a 12 by 14 sill nylon tarp this is my main shelter tarp um, <clears throat> I've been using this one now I've probably made eight or nine trips with it. It seems a little thin to me, but so far it's holding up really well. It has little tabs on it that I can tie off to and everything. No grommets, they're all um, tabs. This is another part of my water system. This is an MSR, I think it's called a dromedary bag. Um, and I don't know, I think this thing holds like over a gallon of water, maybe even almost two gallons. But um, sometimes I actually pack this, it's empty right now, but sometimes like in the hot weather, I'll actually fill this up partially full and <clears throat> carry it inside my pack. Uh, my, most of the time I'm gonna be carrying a gallon of water. Right now it's winter time and so there's a little bit more moisture out there and a few more water sources and it's not quite as hot. So I'm not always carrying a full gallon of water on me. But, um, but I can fill this all the way up to give myself, between this and my bottles, to give myself a little over two gallons of water that I'm, that I'm carrying. Now, the only time I would do that is if I knew where my next water hole was and it was a couple of days away from the one where I was at. Because water is freaking heavy. I think at 8.3 pounds or something like that for every gallon, that's a lot of weight. Then this is just a, this is an underlayer. It's a really compact, um, down, kind of insulated. I consider it to be pretty fragile. So um, really, I only use this for sleeping. Um, I guess if it got really cold, I would put it on under my storm shelf for another layer. But <clears throat> so far, I've only ever really used it for sleeping in. Oh, and another thing, I, I pack a lot of my stuff in little in little bags, not a lot of it, but a few things, like this tarp and this. These bags also are my collection bags, so when I leave camp with my belt and my butt pack on them, I always generally throw these bags in so I can use them to collect any kind of resources I happen to come across. And then last, almost last I think, but not least, this is a Wiggies poncho liner, so it's filled with that lanolite insulation. It's, um, it's, it's very warm. It's 
spent a good piece of kit for me. And other than that, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I do have a sleeping pad attached to my pack. Um, so my big challenges out here are the extreme temperature ranges, the scarcity of water, and the scarcity of food. So a lot of my issues with weight in my pack are related to the fact that between my Gore-Tex gear, my poncho, my tarp, my, um, my underlayer jacket, I actually have quite a bit of gear, but keep in mind that in this country, it, even in the summertime, it can be 90 degrees in the day and drop down to 40 degrees at night. We can get frost in July here, um, <clears throat> and even the occasional little snowstorm in July. In the wintertime, it's a completely different ball game. Like between now and February, March-ish, we could have periods of time where the temperatures drop down below zero. Um, I've seen it go for a week or two at a time, seven below, 12 below. So if I'm gonna live out there and the possibilities of those temperatures hitting those levels exist, I have to have some extra gear to deal with it. So that's it, that's everything that lives. Um, I've opened the belly of my beast and bared my soul. Please um, comment, give me suggestions, thoughts, ideas especially in, in regards to the food preparation or food procurement, I guess, more accurately. That's kind of my next journey to embark down. I feel like I've got this part of my kit pretty well worked out, <clears throat> but I, I'm fairly low in the ranks of figuring out the food procurement thing. So hope you guys enjoyed, and I look forward to your comments and suggestions.